questions, comments? Okay, right back there, and then, um, yeah, um, and then Imran, and then up front, and then Channing, and then <coughs> Yvonne. That's five people already. So uh, Please uh, do say your name. Yeah, my name is Christophe Muller. I'm from uh, the University of Aix-Marseille in France. I found uh, I found the presentation uh, uh, very very interesting with uh, in-depth uh, data analysis and, uh, and 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 obviously we can learn a, a, a lot from, by, with this type of, of exercise. I'm I'm a little bit worried uh, about one thing, which is uh, the the unemployment. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, a lot of uh, the, the effect of, of the economy on, on, on the poor uh, is going to go through uh, the fact that some people are just unemployed, they don't have, so they don't have wage. Um, and you miss this, the, 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 this part of the analysis with, with these techniques, uh, especially in South Africa, where the level of uh, unemployment is so high, and in some communities, it's still higher than the average that, uh, that, that, that you have shown. So I, I've, uh, my first point is uh, uh, what's happening with unemployment and how does it interact with, with this uh, uh, analysis. Perhaps some of the effects that you see are through selection effect in and out unemployment uh, state. And the second, the second uh, uh, remark is uh, that will be uh, really interesting to look at at the different communities, the different ethnic group, to see what happened. Especially, you know, that is South Africa, so uh, <laughs> we are really interested in the difference between these people. Great, thanks for that, Harun. Uh, just one, one thing that sort of doesn't add up for me uh, is your story about, um, about the autumn in the trade union collective uh, 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 bargaining story. So my sense of it would be um, it's precisely the um, it's precisely the group who do the automated um, the sort of automated routine jobs are precisely the group that are that, that are most sort of uh, uh, sort of powerfully in the trade union movement, and they. <clears throat> They they likely uh, to, uh, to be the group that would would most uh, sort of m m manage to have secured some sort of premier. Thank you very much, I Ivan Turok. Uh, very interesting presentation. Just a quick question, right towards the end, um, when you talked about the outsourcing from uh, United States and, and, and Europe. South Africa could be a recipient of, of some of these jobs, and I'm thinking particularly around the BPO call center type, it's that ICT category of tasks that you talked about. Um, the government claims this is one of the major beneficiaries of South Africa, and there are advantages of the same time zone as, as, as Europe, language issues for UK, and also big government incentives. I'm just wondering whether that could be a factor as well in the positive performance of that particular category of tasks. Thanks, Arun. I'm looking forward to reading the paper. Um, just uh, when you were talking uh, through the, the, the first points with the share, it was a lot of technology. And then when you were talking with respect to the wage and wage premium, it was a lot of trade. And I, if you just talk about that a little bit. And then the other thing, uh, that if, if you happen to have thought about it, uh, you know, we're observing you know, tremendous penetration of South African enterprises into the rest of Africa. And, and you, you really are, I mean, you're not highly skilled endowed versus the United States, but you certainly are skills endowed versus, versus Africa. And I, I tend to, th in the South African case, I tend to think that trade would, might be a big player, bigger than what your first shares would, would seem to indicate. And, uh, but but I, we, what your story was telling in the, in the second part, and it, is this FDI, if you just talk a little bit about that, that'd be great. I think my question is related to, to last question, so, but uh, it's related, but uh, 
basically story is uh, task wage premium is driven by trade in tasks and possibility of slashing up productions and uh, is it really uh, is it the multinationals uh, different multinationals uh, American farms or European farms uh, targeting South Africa and therefore South Africa wage premium in particular tasks is changing according to uh, competition or its perception that that is fair, it's really, you know, competition, global competition and driving. So without really moving around the production side, actually task premium is reducing in particular uh, segment of production process. And whether it is, I mean, related to chance uh, uh, question, last question, that is it the South African farms moving out, or is, is it coming in to South Africa, or, or what is the situation with respect to farms' behavior in regions, continent, as well as global sense? Thank you. Okay. Two minutes. Sure. Um, thanks. Those are great questions. There. Um, so the race, the race effects are in the, uh, the quantiles, uh, but what I hear you saying, which I think is correct, is run them separately. Uh, so see if there's anything different that's going on for Africans versus whites and see. And I think that's a great suggestion, actually. Um, uh, the, I think partly um, the bottom end is where some of the action is going on in terms of unemployment. So I think the, at the bottom end of these quantile distributions is where you see a competition for jobs that's actually not happening. Uh, either because of trade union action or, and then, and then across the rest of the distribution, you've got the structural mismatch. And I think that's where um, it's not a case of necessarily institutional effects that uh, prevent uh, a reduction in the employment. It's more structural barriers, right? So whether it's a skills mismatch or whatever the case may be, um, uh, that means almost that you've got uh, a fairly heavily segmented labor market. So you've got the excess supply of labor that that really it doesn't allow much churning except at the bottom end between the employed and the unemployed uh, uh, across jobs. Um, Imran's point, I think that's a really, that's, that's a clever point because in a sense, um, are we saying that uh, you've got uh, the National Union of Metal Workers is, uh, is really, should if they're doing their job correctly, which they supposedly are because they're one of the strongest unions, you should be seeing uh, a wage distribution that looks the opposite of what we're showing there. Um, so one way to think about that is possibly that, that we're observing, um, we observing wage bargaining as it happens uh, at that point in time. So the real question is, over time, have you seen a decline in the bargaining power of that trade union? And I, and I think that may be true. I think you may be seeing a decline in the bargaining power um, of trade unions, despite despite what the sort of strike, strike data and um, annual bargaining round seem to suggest. I think that's true for all private sector unions except the public sector. Uh, so I think it's true for all unions except the public sector unions, where I think they've actually grown in, in power and in strength over the period. Uh, and there's data to show that that's is that true. Showing up in the face -to -face there? Um, is that where education is? Yes. Okay. So teachers, teachers are there. So exactly. Teachers are in face-to-face. -face. Thank you. Um, uh, so if, uh, Ivan's point, uh, Channing's and Machiko's, if you don't mind, I'll just sort of combine them because they're sort of similar, right? So there's a two-part answer. One is the modeling approach is that uh, 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 there, the, the, there is something called the new approach called the recentered influence function, which I'm not clever enough to figure out yet, but I know I'll eventually get there. But that allows you to decompose across the quantiles the effects of those different forces. So you can actually get at technology, uh, trade, uh, exogenous policy shocks, and then all the other individual controls. So that's the, if you like, that's the technique answer. So that's what we'll try and do. I don't think it's as good as your stuff, the input-output analysis. I think you really, in order to separate out the technology trade story, you need more than these uh, these, these techniques uh, that we have, but but we'll give it a go all the same. Um, just in terms of a general reaction, I think that's it's interesting. Yes, South Africa is a big player, but the re in, in in the rest of Africa, the question really is um, what kind of trade. And uh, uh, my sense is that it's primarily in on the retail end. So if you if you're looking at uh, retail goods and uh, 
final sort of produced goods, uh, that's where South African retailers have actually got a competitive advantage in the continent. Are they setting up large manufacturing, light manufacturing firms? I don't see that happening. Uh, there's mining license action, a little bit of private sort of resource extraction going on. And then the really big one is our competitive advantage, which is uh, financial intermediation. And so, if you like, the, probably the biggest story in South Africa is around China buying 20% of Standard Bank as a portal of entry into uh, doing deals in Africa. Uh, and I think that's, that's particularly interesting, but then that would reinforce these kind of trends. Um, I have to tell it zero minutes. Okay, I'll stop. Thanks. Floor is open. Uh, Carol, uh, over there. Uh, Yvonne. So I have three people so far. Okay, good. Okay. Um, and Haroon, four. That's enough. Thank you for an, an interesting presentation. A couple of small questions, really. I'm wondering, um, in your data, do you know um, how often people move? And maybe it's the QLFS that you can use to, to detect this. So is it the same people transitioning in and out and there's some people who are like in stable employment for the duration? I think that might be interesting to look at. Um, another um, thing that was interesting, and I don't, know, I don't think you commented on it, was um, the fact that for the female employees, it seemed that unions mattered and for the males, the contracts mattered, but not the other way around. So I was wondering if you had some comment on that. Thank you. Another, another question. In a country with huge spatial inequalities, um, it's hard to measure lab, um, spatial mobility, but I wonder whether with the NIDS data you can do that and whether or not you factor that in at all. Do people, is there also a corresponding degree of change in where people are working or where they live when they lose their jobs or when they gain, a, gain employment? Any views on that? Hi, uh, Carlos Gradin from the University of Vigo. Uh, I think the paper is very interesting because it, it deals with, um, with one very special issue in South Africa, that is the, the, the lack of employment, no? that is uh, uh, rising uh, what is happening in the income distribution. One, just one specific comment about uh, needs data is that uh, the special design of this uh, data makes that uh, people are not interviewing the same quarter in both waves. So maybe you, ha you need to deal with possible seasonal effects of, uh, especially when looking at transitions. And also uh, that the, the time span between both interviews uh, is different for, uh, for people. So maybe also you are more likely to make a transition uh, the longer the time between both interviews. Thank you. Just a thought on the, on the sort of t uh, t time thing because I thought you said there was a there was a huge uh, sort of drop in, employ in, in in that there's a change at the time of the crisis, which then which then uh, which then starts to starts to reduce with time. Is, is that right? So the the what might be going on is that uh, it's quite tough in South Africa to uh, to lay. Uh, to lay off workers, but it's quite easy to do it if you can show that there's um, uh, that there's some economic grounds for it. So the uh, uh, kind of at the time of the crisis, what you might be sort of picking up is some sort of pent up uh, uh, pent up need to uh, pent up need to reduce the workforce, and then the crisis um, uh, and then the crisis hits and. And 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 and, um, and firms reduce a lot more than than what they should ordinarily. And a um, second thought, just tying up your sort of paper with Harun's, um, I think it 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 does show the important uh, need for Harun and them to uh, to really think about the gender issues as well, which which come out strongly in your paper. So just by way of a comment, I mean, one of the, one of the related to Imran's thing, point is that when the crisis struck, there was a view, particularly within um, the dispute resolution body, 
um, that had to settle all these claims, um, uh, retrenchment packages that were offered, that the majority of workers that were retrenched were those that had, um, didn't have permanent contracts. So I see there that you, you do have uh, nature of contract, but I was wondering if you could think of pushing that a little bit more, maybe an interaction effect with sectors or something, to see if there's something going on there, because uh, you may be underestimating that just because of um, misspecifying it or, or underspecifying it. Okay, Dennis, two minutes, please. Yes. Oh, uh, well, uh, how often do people transition? Uh, I have no idea of that. I, I, yeah, I think it would be possible using like duration models or something because in the QLFS you do have households, well, in, sorry, you do have individuals that can be observed over a maximum of four uh, quarters, so it would be nice to see whether they switch from employment to non-employment or, or it's always... Uh, other people that, that do that. So that's a, a very good uh, suggestion. Uh, about the unionization for females, well, actually, I, 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 I don't think... Well, the, the effect for males is also positive, but it's, it's not significant. And, and in the QLFS, I do find that the union membership, uh, which is only uh, available in the two, from 2011 onwards, uh, that it's significant for both males and females. So I'm not sure whether they are really any um, uh, gender differences there. Um, about spatial mobility, well, I do include in all the regressions uh, province uh, effects, but I haven't really studied in detail. Um, well, s some of them are significant, but it, it's, it's hard to find really a, 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 a clear trend in that. So, so that's also something that I, that I should look at. And in NITS, you, you, you have data uh, uh, up to the district uh, level, so maybe I can do something with that. Um, dealing with interview data, I think that's a very good suggestion um, um, because the interview data are, are available, so, so I can try and see if I, if I um, reduce my sample or I adjust my sample to take that into account, whether this makes a difference. I think that's important, makes it probably also better comparable to the QLFS. Um, then um, about um, the reducing buffering effects, well, I, I was thinking actually the same, that, that, uh, that as long as the crisis lasts, it's, it's easier to also fire those people that have higher skills or are better attached to the, to the firm or have had more uh, on-the-job training, which are typically those with, with higher education, so that those with lower education that are more easily replaceable fly out first and then, and then maybe then the others follow as, as economic activity doesn't pick up. So maybe that's... Uh, but it's, it's difficult to find really hard evidence uh, for that. Um, and then uh, about the interaction effects, yes, I think that's, that's, uh, that's a very valid uh, comment. So I, also some of the racial effects could perhaps be uh, interacted with, with, with industry effects, with type of contracts. Actually, in the QLFS, if I control for... for um, for the type of contract, you see that the, the almost all sectors did did better than than agriculture because in agriculture, so meaning that because in agriculture you you don't have uh, you don't have those uh, strong formal uh, permanent contracts. So I think the contract uh, so part of, at least part of the industry effects are due to the differences in contract. I think contract effects are probably more important even than than the specific sectors. So. Thank you very much. Okay, excellent. We have time for a few <coughs> questions. Oh, sorry. Just go ahead. Uh, I'm Daryl Sequera, an independent environmental consultant. Um, I just have two questions. One is, um, you, you use the term Indian migrants. Uh, where did they come from? Did they come from neighboring Kenya, Tanzania, or do they actually come from India or somewhere else? That's one question. The second one is um, uh, you related the, um, the higher profitability of Indian business enterprises to endowments. And you mentioned what those endowments are. But I was also, but it seems to me, perhaps I'm wrong, that you did not include two factors. One is uh, the ability of the Indian businessman to speculate correctly 
uh, how to uh, promote their business in the future from, from the present. So correct speculation uh, plays a role perhaps, and secondly also the management of their ongoing businesses in terms of efficiency and profitability. Um, I just want to add on to that question for a minute. I mean, um, were these Indian entrepreneurs ethnically Indian, but possibly Ugandan citizens, or were they actually newcomers to uh, Kampala? <coughs> um, Shall we say recent? If there is any xenophobic reaction in the country against this, uh, because in some countries, these minorities that are yeah. doing well, they, uh, there is some xenophobic reaction against them. And maybe if this is the case, this could explain also they are reluctant to give information that maybe yeah. could use against them. So it's by ignorance I'm asking if there is the case in, in Uganda or not. Um, a question about age and whether family ownership I mean, it looked like a very skewed sample uh, from what you were saying. You didn't get much response from many companies. So was this, were these sort of long-established Indian companies that have been passed through from generation to generation, sending their, you know, sibling, their uh, children to university? This just looked like a very different kind of cohort. Um, um. So I, I can't remember all the slides, but I had two questions. One is if you had sex or dummies in there, so the control for mm -hmm. something else going on. But related to that, whether whether you, uh, you, you looked at the differences across the profit distribution. So in a way, you may be seeing something more interesting if you looked at low profit rather than high profit or low capital intensity and high capital stock um, mm -hmm. firms. Um, and so maybe instead of an OLS, you could go, well, I don't know, quantile or something, just to see if you pick up something more interesting. Mm. Just uh, one um, question. Um, are, the mar are, are these firms selling to the same type of markets? Like, are some of these Indian firms exporting, or do you know that are these all very small? Um, maybe that might make a difference. Okay, so on the nature of the Indians and their business, um, they are all real Indians coming from, migrating from India, and they are all first migrate, uh, first generation migrants. So that during the Idi Amin area, all Indians got expelled from Uganda. Actually, the, before there were was an even larger Indian population, so they all came back uh, just in recent years. Um, and their businesses are still quite small, so they do not export. Um, <coughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I think uh, adding like uh, management of the business or correct speculation, I think uh, yeah, that would probably explain a lot. The problem is, <coughs> um, I'm not sure how. We don't have a good measurement of this, I think. Uh, but yeah, maybe I need to further look into this. Um, the firm age um, where, uh, is here, so they are they they are not significantly older or well more well established than uh, the than the Ugandan enterprise. There's no significant difference in firm age. Um, and uh, to your comment, I think that's a very good idea. I'm not sure uh, how much I can do with a small sample size, but I will definitely uh, look into it. I think that's a good suggestion. Um, yeah. okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And it's time for coffee.